Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. Many of you are probably aware of the issues some set-top boxes have with decoding DRM encrypted channels on ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals. Even the next-gen certified tuners from ADTH and Zapperbox will only decode DRM encrypted channels with an internet connection. For months, I, along with various media outlets, have been told that these issues are very limited and that all standalone next-gen enabled TVs from manufacturers like Sony, LG, Samsung, and Hisense have no trouble decoding DRM encrypted channels. Well, it turns out they do, and I have proof. Those of you who might not be familiar with the technical terms, ATSC 1.0 is a broadcast standard that nearly every TV station uses for their over-the-air signal. If you use an antenna for local TV channels, chances are you're picking up an ATSC 1.0 signal. ATSC 3.0, also known as Next Gen TV, is a next generation over-the-air TV standard that's launched in several markets. It advertises some promising features including better reception and HDR, but has been plagued with DRM encryption locking some people out of accessing it. In recent months, as TV stations turned on DRM encryption, I read posts and comments from people claiming that their next-gen enabled TVs aren't decoding their local channels that have DRM encryption turned on. At first, I thought that maybe these issues were either related to the user's antenna setup or a required firmware update from the manufacturer. Upon further investigation, it seems that these issues may be a little more widespread than I thought. Several viewers sent me some videos and I noticed a trend. Their next-gen enabled TVs were not able to decode DRM encrypted channels on ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals, despite being updated to the latest firmware. This video was sent to me from Lindsay in Pleasant Hill, Missouri. The DRM encrypted channels drop out every 30 to 60 seconds for an extended period of time, as you see here. This video from Rodney in New Orleans shows the same issue. His antenna brings in the signals at about 80% with a very high SNR of 34 dB. Despite this, the DRM encrypted channels either only work for a few seconds or take over a minute to load up, in the case of Fox affiliate WVUE. Rodney has contacted Sony and even posted the issue on their support forum months ago, but the problem still has not been resolved. Issues with DRM encrypted channels are not limited to Sony branded TVs either. This video is from Dave in Vienna, Virginia, about 15 miles from DC. In this case, his next-gen enabled LG TV displays a scrambled message when he tries to tune to the two stations with DRM encryption, WRC and WUSA. This video is from Judy in Harrison, Arkansas. She owns a Hisense U8H TV that picks up all the next-gen broadcasts from Springfield, Missouri, except the one that is DRM encrypted. NBC affiliate KYTV. What a coincidence! But wait, there's more! This video is from Ken in Newark, Delaware. His next gen enabled Hisense TV displays a Mo Not Supported message on DRM encrypted channels from Baltimore, WMAR and WBAL. Now, to give the industry the benefit of the doubt, most standalone next gen enabled TVs don't have issues of coding DRM encrypted channels, but the thing is, some do. The main reason I made this video is to voice my concerns that when DRM encryption is in the equation of ATSC 3.0, some devices will have issues with it. It's then up to the TV or set-top box manufacturer to fix the problem, which isn't guaranteed. Should a manufacturer decide that ATSC 3.0 is not worth supporting, like LG recently decided, TV stations with DRM encryption might not be decoded in the future. Even if a problem is fixed with a firmware update, what is someone supposed to do if they don't have internet service? I've set up antennas in several homes that don't have a home internet connection. TVs should just work right outside the box for years. Not sort of work and possibly work better in the future with a firmware update that might not ever come. This video once again proves my point that DRM encryption is doing little to prevent piracy and instead is just inconveniencing manufacturers and consumers. In this case, it locks people out of accessing next-gen broadcasts even on standalone next-gen enabled TVs. 
I must say, I'm getting really annoyed having to continuously push this issue when very few people in the position to change things are listening. I understand that the FCC is aware of some of these issues, but for the most part, they've just sat around and let the whole thing happen. Despite the concerns from myself, Lon Seidman, Cord Cutters News, Tech Hive, and thousands of individual comments on the official FCC docket of Next Gen TV, broadcasters continue to turn on DRM encryption on more and more TV stations. At this point, the only way I see this madness ending is with an act of Congress. With that being said, I urge all of you to contact your local and state representatives if you share my concerns about DRM encryption on free over-the-air TV broadcasts. My main concerns, which most of you probably agree with, is that the red tape and cost of DRM certification will limit affordable options for consumers, and DRM on its own will lock some devices out of accessing local channels if the manufacturer can't get certified, or if there's no internet connection. Yes, the only two ATSC 3.0 set-top boxes that decode DRM encrypted channels currently do not work without an internet connection. This poses a serious danger in the event of severe weather. If you contact your local elected officials, you can also make the point that if fewer people are watching local broadcast TV, they are less likely to see political ads that help get politicians reelected. That'll definitely get the ball rolling. Broadcasters have been pushing the narrative that without DRM, they'll lose valuable content and broadcast TV will die. It's a classic case of multi-billion dollar corporations whining that they are going broke when financial reports say otherwise. I keep bringing up this issue of DRM because I truly care about antenna viewers. It seems that every time there is a new technology, like in the case of the digital transition, valid concerns are ignored and people get left behind, especially the elderly and people in rural areas. If a person has no issues picking up ATSC 1.0 channels right now, ATSC 3.0 needs to be picked up just as well in the same way on the device of their choice. For many, it's the HD home run. With DRM encryption, there's a chance that this tuner, along with others, might never be certified to decode it and become a brick. We cannot take one step forward and two steps back with this new TV standard. Network tuners and DVRs need to be an option for the consumer with ATSC 3.0, along with set-top boxes that don't require an internet connection, and standalone TVs that just work for over-the-air channels right outside the box without a firmware update. Once again, to be clear, the main reason I'm making this video isn't to say don't buy a next-gen enabled TV, it's not going to work. The chances are it will work just fine. I'm making this video to say because of DRM encryption that some issues will happen. And a few of my viewers haven't had them resolved by the manufacturer, so what are they to do? Before buying a next-gen enabled TV or set-top box, I would highly recommend doing your research, looking up YouTube reviews, and then also reading the reviews online. Make sure people are able to watch their channels and that there aren't any issues with the DRM encrypted channels in the market. Next week, I'll be testing out the recent firmware update on the Zapper box that now enables it to decode DRM encrypted channels. Will it work? Stay tuned to find out. Well, that sounded like the beginning of one of my videos, but it's actually the end. I appreciate those of you who have followed me in recent months. Every time I bring up this issue, it seems the videos get a lot of views, and I really appreciate all of you watching my videos. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or as a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos help you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to help support them, while gaining exclusive perks such as behind-the-scenes content, access to my videos ad-free one day early, and direct contact with me, Visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button this video and you can also click the thanks button. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA or sign up to my email list linked in the description below. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos and have an awesome day.